can you be happy when you know so much is wrong? Damn right, I'm paranoid. If you're not, then you're not aware of the stare that'll breathe down your block. Keep you on lock. Keep you with ignorance. Good afternoon and welcome to Down the Rabbit Hole. It's Thursday, May. Yeah, it's May, right? Yeah, May 19th, 2016. I am uh, joined by my good friends, uh, Dave, Dave, and Kenny. Nice. Are we on the nice. air already? Yeah, we, we are. are. Dave, so nice you could join us. How are you Hi. today? Doing very well today. Good. You you look you look like charged up. You look chipper. David, what about you, man? I'm good, man. I was on two wheels all day, so nothing wrong with this. You rode to work too. I did, yes. I'd like to say hi to our sponsors. Incompaperprinting.com. Whatever you need printed, they do it. Give a shout out of the day to our friends at I am the face of truth.com and our pals at Architects and engineers for 911truth.org. That's AE911truth.org. I do want to do one shout out to God and Jesus because we, our job here, there are many different ways to operate inside the body of Christ. Our particular one is exposing the activities of the dark side. So uh, sometimes it's are, not the They most, are so busy. They are. Uh, they I'm going to really. you, show you how busy they are. You guys are going to be surprised by some of the stuff I'm showing you today. But they're very real. They were predicted, and they are not even Jesus's or God's enemy because they've already been beaten by them. This is man's enemy. We should all be awake to this. Or I should say it is one way to wake up to the truth of this world. This is how it happened for me personally. But So uh, I'm throwing my shout-out to uh, God, Jesus, and Thank all you, of the powers I, that be. Yeah, I'm unscripted today, and I apologize, Lord. Should have given my shout out. Lightning strike. Yeah, but he already knew you were gonna do that, so Exactly. Right. That's right. He already knew it, that. Yeah, yeah, he knew that already. So And he it's was not test- down actually testing Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see if Well, I told you when um I never forget to say that, or I knock on wood. I don't want to ever forget to say that because when uh, we opened up the Anatomy of a Great Deception back in the September of 2014, I had the little list of who to say thank you to. And I went through my list. And I never said anything about thanking God. And I kid you not, Eric Schaltis was a witness because he came over that night afterward. But that night, a lightning strike hit a tree in our front yard and knocked the thing down. Now, maybe it was random. All right, but I'm not taking any chances. I'm I'm assuming that (laughs) was a message and it's not a bad one. So uh, better not to. Again, I'm sorry about that one, God, but I will not forget to... You're the one that's behind all of this stuff anyway. I mean, no one is enlightened. No one can actually reach certain levels of knowledge or wisdom without influence from the powers that be above. It is not something that you, I think you can just look at analytically and research. You've got to, Something's got to be going on inside of you that you don't have much control over. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. So. To I tend to agree. Solid opinion, dude. I think it's true for reading the Bible. Like, if you read it just as a scholar, you can't get very far. It's a three-dimensional book, and you almost need, like, this little, this little key that is this invisible thing that helps you connect things in there. Uh, yeah, are we going to play quotes of the game? You guys want to play? Sure. Kenny, are you going to play today? Kenny? Sorry. Right. This one's not going to be a multiple choice. I want you to tell me which president in American history said this. First one. You ready? The high office of president has been used to foment a plot to destroy the American's freedom, and before I leave office, I must inform the citizen of his plight. Which president said that? Um, Any guesses, anyone? I don't know. Abe Lincoln? Hoover. Hoover? Herbert Hoover, yeah. yeah Abe Lincoln. Lincoln. Uh, that was actually John F. Kennedy. Oh, uh, you know, I should have known that. You should have. I know. Because I think we've actually done that one before. Dumb. Good job, guys. Okay. The following right. quote. I am concerned for the security of our great nation, not so much because of any threat from without, but because of the insidious forces working from within. MacArthur, JFK, Eisenhower, or Schwarzkopf? MacArthur. I'll say Schwarzkopf. It was MacArthur. Nice. Howard ties this bad boy up. Let's see. The quote is, Now that we can control the weather, create earthquakes and tidal waves, and use it as a weapon of war, we need to do a treaty. That was either Ronald Reagan, Senator Claiborne Pell, 
Senator Ted Kennedy or Albert Einstein? I'm going to say Senator Powell, was it? Einstein. Uh, it was Claiborne Powell, U.S. Senator. He said this in 1975. He served as sen- in the U.S. Senate from 1961 to 1997. Now that we can he said that the when? weather. In 1975. Wow. There are others like that. I'll pull them out. That's right out of the senatorial records. Next one. In the event that I'm reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus in order to contribute something to solve overpopulation. Charles Manson, Prince Charles, Bill Gates, Ted Turner. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. It was Prince Charles. What? I'm sorry, Prince Philip, Prince the Philip. Uh, husband of Queen Elizabeth, not the son. Either way, it's high-level royalty. Hmm, what a great guy to have <laughs> standing over me. All right, should we keep do- doing a few more? I've got a bonus question today that I'm excited about. That's the only one I really care about. Next quote. What luck for rulers that men do not think? MLK, Gandhi, Stalin, Hitler. Gandhi. Stalin. Oh, Gandhi? I say Stalin. It was Hitler. Yeah, close enough. I don't have backstory on that quote, but I've got it, which means I got it from somewhere, and I didn't make it up or anything crazy like that. It's not like it's shocking that he said that. (laughs) Uh, Next quote. Democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch. Liberty is a well-armed lamb contesting the vote. Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Noam Chomsky... Martin Luther King. Democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch. Liberty is a well-armed lamb contesting the vote. I mean, any of those guys could have said that. I don't know. Jefferson. Well, that's the point in a multiple choice. It's supposed to be hard. Yeah, I get it. All right, Chomsky, is it? Noam Chomsky. Noam. I'm going with Noam. This goes back to founding father, Benjamin Franklin. Mm. It was one of those two. Now, we're technically in a democracy right now, but that was not what we were supposed to be. We were supposed to be a republic. I mean, we now only really can vote on the representatives of our two-party system. We make fun of countries like North Korea because they have one official on an election ballot, but we have freedom because we have two officials on an election ballot. The world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. This was John in the Book of Revelation, Edward Teller, Albert Einstein, or Gandhi. I say I'm going to say Gandhi. Einstein. Holy cow. Howard, I believe. Is Howard in the lead right now? It was Albert Einstein, a a German-born American physicist. A two-two tie. Two-two tie. Mm -hmm. Um, The quote is, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. This was Nathan Rothschild, Mayor Amstel Rothschild, Uh, the book of Proverbs, or the book of Psalms. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. I say Proverbs. That was my first choice. Oh, you guys are getting good. It was Proverbs 22-7. All right. You guys are tied right now? 3-3. The fool doth think he is wise, but the wise man knows himself to be a fool. Book of Proverbs, Book of Psalms, William Shakespeare, or Aristotle. The Pro- fool doth think he is wise, but the wise man knows Sounds himself like to be a fool. It's the, I think it's the book of Proverbs. That's my guess. Okay, I'm going to go Shakespeare and hate myself. I, I wouldn't be. I'd be loving yourself, Howard, because it was William Shakespeare. Mm. Uh, we'll do <clears> one more, and then we'll do the bonus. May, you know, we're, we're just making this up as we go along. Here's the quote. What is important is to dwell upon the increasing evidence of the existence of a secret conspiracy throughout the world for the destruction of organized government and the letting loose of evil. And this one's not going to be multiple choice. Which president said this? What is important is to dwell upon the increasing evidence of the existence of a secret conspiracy throughout the world for the destruction of organized government and the letting loose of evil. A warning from a president of the United States. Thomas Jefferson. Okay. We got one vote for Jefferson. Ronald Reagan. Uh, it was Woodrow Wilson. Oh, dang. In his 1913 book, A New Freedom. Oh, there's so many 9-11 ones, but 
the 911 ones that I've got are hard to put in a multiple choice because these are all lieutenant colonels and generals, but they're not household names. There's something uh, a little extra dimension added when it is a household name, someone we recognize that has yeah, said right. this. Let's just move to the bonus question. Do it. All right. I'm going to give you four statements, okay? One of them was not said by George Bush Jr. Oh, good. Good format. I like this. And I want you to tell me which one. Okay. This is like the three truths and one lie game. So I'm going to give you four quotes, and you have to tell me which one was not really a quote. From? George Bush Jr. Jr. President George Bush, the one right before Barack. We could never have predicted that they'd fly planes into buildings. That's quote number one. The intelligence I received proves this was an Al-Qaeda operation. That's quote number two. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September 11th. That's quote number three. And the fourth, I'll be long gone before some smart person ever figures out what happened inside this Oval Office. We could never have predicted that they'd fly planes into buildings. The intelligence I received proves this was an Al-Qaeda operation. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories about 9-11. I'll be long gone before some smart person ever figures out what happened. I'll say the first quote he did not say. That we could never have predicted they'd fly planes into buildings? Yeah. Okay. That's what I was leaning towards, but just to establish a winner, I'll go for the second one. Which is the intelligence I received proves yeah. this well, was now. What is that? Multiple choice welfare? What is that? Yeah. Okay. We've got to spread the wealth. I would have said the first three, but I'm <laughs> going to say the fourth one. But if the other first three are right, then I would have said that oh, one. Oh, whatever. Actually, Howard's rocking today because the quote that I made up was the intelligence I received proves this was an Al-Qaeda operation. I knew, see, I knew the fourth one. Because that was in the movie. Which no. That, was that in the movie, the fourth one? No, no. The one that was in the film was Let Us Never Tolerate Outrageous Conspiracy Theories. This was in front yeah. of the UN concerning the uh, attacks of September 11th. No, the fourth one about lies. the smart people. I'll be long gone before some smart person ever figures yeah, out what happened inside this Oval Office. Jeff Solomon brought that to our attention. Oh, did he? Yeah. So you got it right. Uh-huh. It wasn't multiple choice welfare. It was domination. Howard just rocked. It was multiple Howard choice was, domination. He was yeah. basically dunking over yeah. you all day yeah, today. Yeah, that's what that was. Yeah, I owned you, dude. Pretty much. In the paint, I well, owned you. Well, you beat me by two. I mean, whatever. Okay. Well, that's a solid <laughs> yeah, but victory. if each was worth ten points. Hey, winning is winning. I get it. That's yeah. right. So we are kind of picking up where we were last week, right? Yep. Last week we were looking at uh, images, symbols, uh, one of the many, many, many ways to discover that there is an organized evil cabal operating on this planet. They've been using symbols since the days of the Tower of Babel when God confused all the languages. It was a response by the dark forces of this world to get around the language barrier. And those symbols continue on through today. And there are many, many, many symbols, many more than we can cover. We have stuck to some of the basic ones. And I'm not a fan of talking about the devil horn so much because that does exist in rock and roll, and it is a Texas longhorn sign. But I did put some of those in there last week because it doesn't matter if you're a president or not. If you and your wife go get dressed up, and go to a very formal event, a state dinner, let's say, what are the odds that you and your wife are both going to be making a devil horn sign at the same time without coordinating well, with even, each other into the camera? Even the Texas Longhorn thing, okay, so that is a plausible explanation for G-Dub. Why are there twice as many photos of Obama doing it? <laughs> right, good and question. can you please explain the Aleister Crowley shirt? Please. It's yeah. got to be photoshopped. I, I was, <laughs> yeah, right. I, I was talking it's to a, people after the show, and I told them, and they're like, "You're kidding me! No way! That's re- that's ridiculous! No way!" And I pulled it up right for them, and they're like, "You're, oh my god!" It is the doctrine, dude. That would be these... like that would be like the Pope wearing a King Diamond shirt. Yeah, you mean the Pope wearing a uh, maybe no, a no an Anton Lavey shirt? Yeah. <laughs> what if we it. had the Pope wearing a sash with some? Demonic-looking reptilian creature with horns on it. Well, we've already got that. Yeah, we do have that. Yeah, well, we that was going to be one of the images we were probably yeah. going to see today. I like uh, that. I like that one where it says, "Who is that?" That one. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, that one cracks me up. Um, people are waking up, but 
I'm telling you, Anderson Cooper is not going to knock on your head and say, hey, by the way, we're about to uh, ruin your life. Wake up to what's happening, folks. We're just giving you some of the evidence to go look for. Some of the signs we're going to be following today are signs on money. I had suggested that we follow the raven or the eagle's wings. I mean, you said that it was rape. Raven or a falcon. Okay, the bird. Uh, Those wings have been throughout history. The owl. The owl. Follow the the eye, sometimes called the eye of Horus, the eye of Lucifer, the all-seeing eye, and the pyramid. And whenever you find any of those combined with each other, you're most likely looking at something that's got a lot more meaning behind it than just some random accident. And with the images that we're going to show you today, keep in mind that it's possible some of these are just accidents of nature or just people joking around, and there is no meaning behind it. But think of it like this. They would all have to be hoaxes in order for us to be able to blow this off and not worry about it. So all of these images would have to be uh, just random accidents with no meaning behind them. Because even if one of them has meaning behind it, I would consider it very significant. And by the time we're done looking at this, it's, uh, it's over. We just don't even have enough time to go into all of these. So we're going to be looking at some symbols from ancient history. Again, some modern-day symbols. And again, we're going to be focus on, focusing on pyramids, which is a uh, counterfeit image of the devil. And it is my theory, and this is a theory, that in counterfeiting or mimicking God's kingdom which the dimensions were given to us, I believe, in Genesis. We talked about that last week. Or yeah, what, we did. Or Revelation, whatever. Revelation. Revelation, yeah. And it could be some believe that they were being given the dimensions of a cube, but it also works perfectly as the dimensions of a equilateral pyramid, and that just so happens to be a structure that we have found on every single continent, including Antarctica, and these are not accidents. Who was it that built these things? I mean, was it ancient aliens or the other popular theory? Was it the very demons and fallen angels and Nephilim uh, output of the mingling of those fallen angels with human women? I mean, a pretty incredible story to even think about that put these massive structures together, which are still there. Sometimes they're covered up by overgrown trees and things of that nature, but this is documented. Every continent, including Antarctica. Antarctica. Think about that. How? Our history is not what we were taught. Um, the 666 signs with your hand, you know, the, the equivalent of the OK sign. I'm going to try and stay away from those today unless we see it combined with another sign or we see it also making an OK sign over one of your eyes representing one-eyed I have Horus and the 666 combined. So keep that in mind. Now, these things are all over the place. And like we've talked about, we're not going to find these, you know, on golf course logos or plumbing supply companies or upholstery uh, retailers. We're going to find them in places like film, media, entertainment, anything that impacts our belief systems as a people. We're going to see it in high technology and large businesses, space, military, government. We're going to see an architecture of famous and well-known buildings, uh, corporate logos, and we're going to spend a little extra time today focusing on 9-11 and some of the incredible images that not just came out of that day, but came out of our media system leading up to that day. And some of those, for me, are uh, shocking. Shocking because their doctrine, for whatever reason, now, and I don't, this comment is based on evidence I've seen, not anything that was told to me or any secret document I've read, but it, this just seems to be a trait of this evil cabal that is at work in the world. But for some reason, it is their doctrine to broadcast their plans hidden in mainstream media hidden in the things we see and touch every day. Do you think that the reason they do that is because they're showing us their hand and kind of going, and there ain't nothing you can do about it, pal? Or do you think they do it because it's their way of letting others 
other like-minded people realize that they've got their stamp all over the egg, just like a terrorist organization taking credit for, for, for an event. I think it's both. I think, and there may be even more reasons. Um, some of the possibilities I've considered, and there is, I've got, with this particular, you know, this little uh, uh, sidebar we're talking about now, this is personal conjecture, so bear with me on this one. I've considered things such as it is some type of heavenly or cosmic law that they are following, that this, you know, is uh, perhaps they have a set of rules they have to follow. I I don't necessarily believe that. These are all things I've considered and perhaps dismissed. Um, Your idea, I think, is right on point because what better way to build pride and to uh, give a feeling off of, power like you're in the know in something when you know a little secret that's buried in a movie that the masses just stare at and they don't get it there's a feeling of uh it is a kind of a euphoria in a sense feeling like you're in the in crowd and everybody likes to be in the in crowd everybody likes to have that little bit of information that no one else has i think it's also a display of power when the forces that you are aligned with can in a sense predict the future i mean if what is it that is the one thing of all the ancient texts that have ever been written every religious book that has ever existed what is the one thing that separates the bible from all of them it is the one characteristic only the bible has no other book in history has it Other other than jesus himself no, a lot of books talk about Jesus. Yeah, but not in the context that the Bible does. There is something the Bible does which no other book has been able to do. The predictions? Yes. Ah. Predicting the future and with 100% accuracy. And again, we're up against a counterfeiter. And it wouldn't surprise me that the, this might be uh, his way of trying to, quote-unquote, predict the future. And we're going to see some images that are going to be, I think, for me, when I saw them, were shocking because when you see them put together, all of a sudden you're like, holy cow. The, the, the one thing that, that always always gets me about 9-11, and you might know the number off the top of your head, but I saw a meme, and, uh, and it says uh, it had the date the day September 10th, 2004, and it has, uh, it has a picture of Donald Rumsfeld. It, uh, get where he gives the address that the Pentagon somehow misplaced $32 billion. Well, it was $2.3 trillion. trillion. And they were the supposed, as if this is how data and information is stored, even in 2001. They happened to be working in the section of the Pentagon that was, quote-unquote, hit by the, quote-unquote, airplane. So they, quote-unquote, lost this $2.3 million, that $2.3 trillion. But that he said that on 9-10, the day before 9-11, 2001. Yeah, and for and, uh, our uh, errors and omissions, uh, I just gave the wrong year. Yeah, it's so all right. But it, I was confused. Um, Anyone that's ever worked with data knows that um, it's not like it, it was on a bunch of sheets of paper and some guys had it in a briefcase and it caught that fire and went away. It's redundantly backed up 7 Redundant billion times. times a thousand, and it's laughable to say, oh, we misplaced $2.3 trillion because someone flew a plane into a building. Come on, folks, wake up. And all our backup records were in Building 7. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Along with all the lawsuits that the yeah. SEC there were. There were thousands of uh, SEC cases and, yeah. that were in play, and they had just been moved to Building 7. Kind of went away. Huh. They did go away. Yeah, and went away for um, mm. Eva. And who benefited? Oh, so, predictive programming. Before we get into, um, do, you, do you guys want to take a break? I know it's an early break, but do you guys want to take a short break now? All We're right, down the rabbit hole. Down. We'll be back in about three or five, five minutes. Yeah, about five minutes. Sounds good. Back to down the rabbit hole. We had to take a quick unscheduled break there, but we paid some bills. We are, uh, we are talking about the symbols that are hidden in the things we see every day in movies and cartoons and in logos, just in everything. And uh, Dave was about to get to the meat and potatoes of the discussion. So I'm going to turn it over to him. 
All right, so we ended the quiz game, the uh, quotes game, with uh, four things Bush said. And, and the uh, fact that I won. Did we mention that? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you won. By two. Now, so we're going to, um, this was meant to be a segue. This isn't so much a symbol as much as it is a sign. Now, do we remember that on 9-11, the Bushes and the Bin Laden family were together that morning? Do, we, do you guys know that? Yes. Yes. Okay. You didn't know that? Uh, maybe. Okay. And the only airline, the only airplane that was allowed air. to fly in U.S. airspace in Laden's the days people. after 9-11 was the Bin Laden's family private jet, which was allowed to leave the United yeah, States. Yeah, I knew that. Okay. So uh, the Bush family is having a meeting with the people or the family of the person that got blamed for 9-11, Osama Bin Laden, right? Right. Okay. So, uh, whenever I see patterns, I notice this. So, I'm going to show you guys. Uh, remember when Ronald Reagan was shot? Yes. All right. Now, two things about that. For 9-11, there were over a dozen drills mimicking a plane crashing into a building on the morning of 9-11. As reported 9/11. by USA Today, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, conducted exercises with fighter jets simulating hijacked planes flown into the World Trade Center in the two years before the attack. The day before Reagan was shot, the Secret Service mimicked a drill of what would happen if the president were shot. I am looking at a Houston Post article from March 31st, 1981, and you can see this circled in red, that Bush's son, this would probably be Jeb or George Jr. or one of the sons, was to dine with John Hinckley's family the day before. That's John Hinckley's who shot right. President Reagan. So here again, a big-time world event. Bush family is, has social plans with the person that would be blamed for the shooting of Ronald Reagan. Flash forward 20 years to 9-11. The Bush family is having a social get-together with the family of the person that would be blamed for 9-11 or, you know, for the Reagan shooting it was the first one. I don't think things like that are accidents. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> and the uh, I would give a dollar to know which Bush son. Uh, it's probably it's written in this article. Because at that point, they would have been making dad president. Uh, well, he was vice president at the time. He would be president later. Yeah, I if, think if it Reagan was intended, were actually murdered. Yeah, I think he was supposed to become the president, and Reagan survived that shooting because the— members of the Secret Service that still did their job, unlike the ones that just sat on their butts while 9-11 airplanes are being hijacked all over the place, leaving the president as a sitting target. They did not do their jobs that day. Uh, maybe the, uh, you know, the infestation of darkness wasn't so uh, pervasive uh, in 1981 because those secret agents, a few of them actually took bullets yeah. for the president. He ended up surviving. Yeah, so, one of so, the guys is in a wheelchair forever. Yeah. James Brady. He yeah, wasn't Secret yeah. Service, I don't believe, but he was... Uh, oh, he was an elected official, right? Yeah, I believe he was. Was Bush Sr.? He was VP the entire yes. time. Yeah. Yes. Yep, okay. the whole time. So, uh, Houston Post, Reagan wounded, and the, uh, the uh, title of the article is Bush's son was to dine with suspect's brother. Wow. Not an accident. Also, that last bonus question, there was another segue in there, and that was one of the things Bush said... In the days right after 9-11, and it's been heavily used as one of the, the things to look to of that there's something more going on. Because in the days right after 9-11, Bush had said, we could never have imagined that people would fly you know, a building into an airplane, uh, fly a plane into a building. Condoleezza Rice echoed the exact same sentiment. She actually was photographed with Osama bin Laden, by the way, the um, like a year earlier, after he was on the most wanted FBI list. Interesting. Wink, wink. We had a dozen military operations mimicking this. We've got what is clearly a plagiarization of Operation Northwoods, the 1961-1962 Defense Department. Uh, I don't know if it was a memorandum, but it was a strategy of how to get Cuba, right. get the Americans to want to attack Cuba by, quote-unquote, fake hijacking an airplane and crashing it with Americans on board. 
So that obviously was at, in play in 9-11. Oh. The government had already considered it. We were running drills that very day to mimic it. Our president gets up and says, how we couldn't have known that. So he's either the most ignorant person in the world or he's just flat out lying. And there's always a fine line between ignorance and deceit. It's hard to tell what's what, but if you ask me, I think this is one of the reasons that uh, Jesus Christ is so adamant about not being tricked and not being ignorant because it is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. Anyone that shows up to the judgment day and says, well, I didn't know I was ignorant of it, it you're, you're lost. You're gone forever. It's almost as serious a, as a, a crime, it seems, in the heavenly realms as flat-out deceit. Ignorance is no excuse. So uh, for all you folks that think this is all made up, I, I would find a different way to uh, look at this. So, let's uh, get into this. We're going to look at how 9-11 was foretold in the media. And there are um, several images. And it doesn't matter if we are talking about cartoons, movies. This goes back all the way to... The establishment of 911, which David Rockefeller was behind, the establishment of 911 is a phone number to call for emergencies. And then, of course, we've got the people that were building the towers, many of them that walked off the job because they had come across information indicating that they were building something that was intended to be brought down at some point in the future on purpose. Their conscience got to them. They walked off the job. The powers that be have been broadcasting this plan. Uh, The earliest signs I have seen go back, it was the late 40s, early 50s in a Bugs Bunny cartoon in which, who's the rooster? What's his name again? Foghorn Foghorn Leghorn. Foghorn Leghorn. And Bugs Bunny, they, he has a mental breakdown, and he's, he's talking about, they're going to bring the towers down. Do you want to send down. me back to the city? The city. I can see it all now. It's high towers. Cold, cruel, ominous. Closing down on you. From every side till you can't breathe. Closer, closer. You can't breathe. You're trapped. You can't think. Clark, what's that? Look! It's the towers! They're falling! Ah! So uh, here we're looking at one from 1976. This is Cookie Monster uh, eating the Twin Towers. Again, by itself, could be an accident. Uh, This is an article right after the Twin Towers were built. This came out, and I want to say this was the New York Times. Um, I'll get some attribution when we put this in there. This was for the Committee for a Reasonable World Trade Center in a uh, little bit of foreshadowing show an airplane flying right towards the newly constructed or about to be constructed World Trade Center. This is their own. Yeah, why have that in the picture? You know what I mean? Why even have that? (coughs) It's a book cover from 1983. It's actually a Spanish book. Uh, It translates into This is How Latin America Suffers, and we are looking at. I want you to look at the image carefully because this is one of the towers falling. You'll notice the people that are the bodies that are falling out of the tower. And it's not just that one tower is hit. You'll notice there's a flame on the second tower. So not only was this book cover predicting that there was going to be something happening to the towers, which you would think, okay, one tower, but this guy, his name is Jose... Uh, Borrea, B-O-R-J-A or I-A, I'm not sure, but you guys can look it up. Uh, A movie, The Squeeze, with Michael Keaton. He's standing between an image of the two towers, and you can see there's a hand that's crushing them. Of all the ways to represent something called The Squeeze, why would you do it? Does this make sense to you? Uh, This was from essentially Beavis and Butthead magazine in 1994. Uh, It's uh, a Viceland magazine article, and it shows two uh, Arab guys with turbans. It's actually Beavis and Butthead. As Arabs. Now, you'll notice also they're, of course, Beavis and Butthead. They're using the demonic hand signs. It's 1994, seven years before 9-11. They're showing an image of two Arabs flying two airplanes into the World Trade Center. It's a cartoon. Are they holding 
Like Looney Tunes bombs? They're holding bombs. One of them has a bomb. They both have uh, devil horns, hands up. Again, do you really think that's well, an accident? And right along the bottom of the page, it says, what is Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda, yeah. <laughs> it's, wow. Bone Machine. I'm guessing that this is a CD cover. This came out in 1996. Now, you'll notice a lot of these bands, if you uh, remember, we did a show. We talked a little bit about John Todd, who was an insider in the music industry and how the Illuminati uses music to convey their message. There is literally a sacrificial temple in Eat, according to him, and, and some other folks at this point, inside of every major record studio. And uh, I don't think a big band gets signed. Now, not that they're in on it. The band members might not be in on it. I mean, they're going along with it like the news reporter is. Like, hey, dude, the world's loving me, and I'm having sex with all kinds of women, and I don't have to wait in line for anything. I'm down. Put on whatever, you, put whatever image you want on my album cover. This shows... One tower tipping into the other, which I believe, if you remember, the World Trade Center in our modern era has been bombed not once, but twice. The first time, I believe, was 1990. If someone has a computer, maybe they can look it up. Remember, there was a massive bomb in the base of the building. And according to the terrorists that were captured in the wake of that, they said their intention was to get one building to tip over into the other building. And that is clearly shown on this uh, Bone Machine album cover from 1996. This is an ad for uh, Pakistani International Airlines. Isn't it funny that Pakistani ISI was the intelligence agency where we tracked funds going from the 19 hijackers that they put on television, this was part of the story, Pakistani ISI had funded their operations, and we had seen several wires to the tune of $130,000. But here in, uh, I don't know what year this is, but I believe this is the early 80s, there's a large full-page ad, half-page ad, and this I believe was out of the New York Times, uh, introducing Pakistani International Airlines, and they've got the silhouette of an airline uh, across both twin towers as if yeah. they're about to crash into it. Again, I don't think these are coincidences. And keep in mind, George Bush, our president, said, oh, we could never have imagined airplanes hitting buildings, yet cartoons imagine it, movies imagine it, our Defense Department officials in the 60s imagined it, and someone in our military Dozens of people had imagined it to the point where they were actually running drills that morning. Well, they actually designed the buildings to withstand an airplane impact. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, you no. called this soft disclosure, and the equivalent of an airliner hitting the twin towers the is the, the, the same as shooting a bullet at a big oak tree. Impacts. The right, oak tree is not going to come in on itself, turning this itself to dust, because there's a bullet hole on the 90th that. floor. Yeah, okay. the way the outer shell is designed. Really it's like putting a pencil through a screen. Plus, we already know that jet fuel is kerosene, and if you've ever had a kerosene lamp or a kerosene heater, they never get anywhere near enough temperature to even minutely degrade steel. I mean, think of uh, your if you have a fire burner in your stove at home. What do you put on it? A steel pan? Have you ever? And those are thin. This isn't like the eight-inch thick beams that we're talking about. I mean, those beams melted. Some of them liquefied in less than an hour with kerosene. Come on, folks. Obviously, there were other agents involved that had something to do with that. This image, now, the AMA, American Medical Association, that is an organization that I would tend to believe could be corrupted. I don't, however, necessarily believe that there's there's evil intent in this particular ad because this is an ad for osteoarthritis. Nonetheless, I do find it odd that of all the ways that they could have shown osteoarthritis, they've got the image of two, a femur and a, you know, your, your legs representative of inside the Twin Towers with an airplane flying into it. And this uh, particular organization has a solution for how you can solve your arthritic yeah, the, problems. The, the, well, the airplane says osteoarthritis. So, I mean, the, symbol, the symbolism is, is yeah. that osteoarthritis can ruin the legs of well, the Twin Towers. It says, it says act before it strikes you, on the, right on that article or that ad or whatever that crazy 
Uh, who, who would even? Yeah, that's some. <laughs> I just look at that. I just shake my Ooh. head. Uh, predictive programming in films. Uh, uh, this uh, is the passport picture of Mr. Anderson. Yes, Thomas Anderson, also known as Neo from the movie The Matrix. Neo, the new one, the right. enshriner of the New World Order. And if you really look at what The Matrix is, it is a plagiarized biblical story of humans finding their salvation through a hybrid. This guy that's half man, half computer program in, in a lot of ways, the way he operates in The Matrix. And his birth date was September 11th, 2001. Could be an accident. Uh, this album, this uh, was uh, called The Coup. Now, if I remember correctly, this album came out on September 10th of 9-11. But don't quote me. I'll do a little research before uh, we put the image up online. But here again, we show something blowing up right around the uh, 70th floor of the World Trade Center behind the uh, guys in the band. Again, I don't, you know, I just don't think it's an... What does this have to do with party music well i'm guessing it didn't come out after no this was from because that would just be you know yeah that would that would be bad uh a movie called the meteor with sean connery and natalie wood shows a meteor coming down to earth from outer space uh the world under attack from outer space and it's showing a meteor heading right for the twin towers Cartoons. We're going to talk about cartoons today. This one was ridiculously blatant. Uh, Bart Simpson holding a wad of cash, pointing to uh, a New York tour guide magazine for $9 with the Twin Towers in the background, so obviously making the 9-11 sign, and it's being linked to the powers of the money supply. This came out in 1997. Uh, this was from a Spider-Man cartoon. Uh, and who is the guy that does all the uh, less? What's his name? Stan. Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Stan thank Lee. you. There's something dark about the work he does. Whether he's dark or not, I don't know. But the predictive programming in in superhero cartoons is um, off. It's off the charts. And here we see uh, one of the twin towers blown up and torn off, like really happened. Of course, it happened in a manufactured way because an airline could never have done that. But uh, here again, as if someone knew that it was coming. This is the uh, Super Tramp album that we talked about. Now, yeah. for whatever reason, when I looked up Super Tramp, these guys are bathing in God. association with dark forces. At first look, I did not get why other people had included this in a 9-11 predictive program. We're looking at a waitress. Now, she's holding... A golden cup. Now, someone, this is not my idea. This was someone else's breakdown. But if you want to get biblical, there's a biblical message in this image because what is another way to say super and tramp? So, super is great, right? Tramp is a harlot. So, the great harlot. Now we're talking, this is the book of Revelation. Yeah. What does the great harlot do? She's got a golden cup of iniquity and she rides the beast. So in a lot of ways, this might be representative of the great harlot. She's holding up a golden cup right to the Twin Towers. We're looking at a waitress from an airplane window. Why? I mean, what, do, what does that have yeah, to do with She's anything? outside the airplane. She's outside the airplane. She's holding this golden cup up to the Twin Towers where uh, the name of the band Supertramp is uh, in the background. Not much to see here. However, when you... Reverse the image right above the two towers. You've got a nine and an eleven. So how long ago did they know? That that's 1979. That, is that what came out. Thank you. 1979. Yeah. I don't think that many foreshadowing clues can be an accident in a single image. Airplane window. Great harlot is somehow behind this. Right over the two twin towers is nine eleven. I mean, it's not that it's even off to the side. It is, like, centered on the two buildings. Uh, one of my favorite movies, I've never gone, this is from Terminator 2, Judgment Day, and I've never seen an embankment that was as low as 9 feet 11 inches. Yeah, that's a good point. But this one happens to just say, caution, 9, 9 11. 11. Well, and, if, and if you look at it, it looks like it could be the Twin Towers, the two sources of light. Uh, be very well said. That's a lot of meaning in this. And uh, I mean, we've all now been on the other side of the camera. Nothing 
gets in front of that camera unless it is by design. I guarantee you, someone they didn't just happen to pick some some uh, overpass that just accidentally had a 911 there. Someone went and painted in red caution and then painted 911. Yeah, cuz actually that is a it's like, it's like a, a runoff. It's not a road. It's like a runoff ditch. Yeah. Yeah. So you wouldn't have a they wouldn't probably have wouldn't have anything because there's no there. traffic yeah. right. other than flowing water. So my point is, this is there by design. Yeah. Why 911? Caution, 911. Yeah, why not 13-6? Are we looking at is... their doctrine, that it is their doctrine to foreshadow what is going to happen? Here again is that super tramp with the close-up of the 911. You're right, 1979. Breakfast in America. Interesting that 911 happened... What time of the day? Yeah. During the morning. It was. Okay, this is one of the creepier ones. This is from the Illuminati card game, which was seized by the Secret Service in 19... It came out in 94. By 95, they had apparently gotten rid of all the sets of cards. Many of them... This is documented. 1995, there was an image of these Illuminati... The Illuminati card game showing the Twin Towers being struck. And obviously, with the image on the card and reality six years later it it's it's hard to believe that the cartoon is what came first there's another illuminati card which shows the pentagon also being hit of all the buildings that were hit yeah. those are the two that they show yeah, the, the two buildings that are flaming and on fire in and this it's card called game. the illuminati card game and through different sources this event has been linked to the illuminati so think about that these are not accidents and if you think they are I'm done apologizing. I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to the audience. I am done apologizing to you. You are the one that is ignorant and fooled, and you got to wake uh, up. There's some dark stuff happening in this world, and it's increasing at an exponential rate. And that was predicted in some book somewhere. Yeah, I The remember. only book that's ever predicted the future without making a single mistake. FEMA. This is from 1997. Ugh. Now, My keep favorite. in mind, FEMA was also at ground zero. The day before 9-11, they were there to do a drill. FEMA was there to do a drill the day before 9-11. It's in the movie The Anatomy of a Great Deception. To be honest with you, uh, we arrived on uh, late Monday night and went into action on Tuesday morning. And not until today did we get... Now this image is from 1997 and it's got the crosshairs right on the Trade Center. And the title of this little booklet is Emergency Response to Terrorism. A self-study. Are these accidents? Yeah, with crosshairs on one of the yeah, Twin Towers. Right on the Twin Towers. And then you look at the fact that, I mean... That's one that got hit first, isn't it? I don't know. FEMA, which is a division of the Department of Homeland Security. I mean, Homeland Security, Fatherland Security. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, yeah. This and is, these are the guys that have built right now, and these things are starting to be... They're starting to come to life. There's staffs, staffs that are starting to be input into these. There are over 800 documented FEMA camps with the ability to house approximately 20 to 30 million Americans at any given one time. Why are these things in existence? Why are they building train tracks to lead into them? Why you know, are the I, gates You know these... what's ironic about that? You, you say that they can hold about 20 million Americans. We were doing a Bible study the other day and the pastor brought up the fact that well, there there's are, 20 million Christians. There's 22 million Christians. Interesting. <laughs> now, we did not coordinate on that fact. I, and I, I don't think those things are accidents anymore. Not, it's not like go look at one FEMA camp. I mean, we now, the independent journalists the of the world, have documented American these things. There are places you can go online. Just go Google or YouTube FEMA camps. And uh, this is one of the scarier things to yeah. see because if you ask me, and I've said this before, the Nazis did not lose World War II. The Germans did. The Nazis, they were shuffled yep. right out of there. They, they threw far. 21 no, mid-level guys at us back. in the oh. Nuremberg trials to represent, oh, we are getting justice on the Nazis. But, I mean, the highest-ranking official that was there was Hermann Goring, who was head of the Air Force. Um, who's the uh, guy that was in charge of the SS, the real creepy one with the Hammer? short... Himmler killed himself, so he never actually stood trial. And the rest of them were no-names. I mean, even... I've studied the hell out of World War II, and I don't really know these guys. They're, yeah. you know... Mengele, no. Hitler, no. 
Um, Borman, no. That, so here we are, the same Nazi op- apparatus that as the war started to turn against them, that is, when they were turned back at Stalingrad in the winter of 41, because they had not even seen any defeat yet, the German army starts in a three-pronged attack of Russia. They get to within about 17 miles of Moscow. I mean, they can see it. That's as close as they got. The Russians, in fact, they didn't even have enough guns for all of their soldiers. They had approximately one rifle for every 10 soldiers. And all of their soldiers, and some of those rifles were their own rifles pointed at their own soldiers saying, we are going to advance if you... Do not advance against the Germans. Even though you have no weapon, you will be shot by us. What you do is, when someone holding a gun is killed, you pick up their gun and you keep going. And the Russians, not through technology, not through production, but through sheer manpower, held back the Nazis at Stalingrad. And Hitler... He would not pull, it was his 6th division or his 5th division, he refused to let them pull out when they had a chance, and instead he said, you're going to fight your way out of it, you're going to fight through. They ended up being encircled by the Russians, and he lost that whole division. And from that point forward, the Germans were in retreat constantly, and they would only have one more offensive in the war, which was the Battle of the Bulge, and the Russians just kept closing, and that's when we see the red swastika map map shrinking and shrinking and shrinking to the point where it was surrounding Hitler's bunker. The entire Russian army is surrounding his bunker, yet we don't know for a fact that we captured Hitler in that bunker. We've got the picture of a dead guy that really does not even look like Hitler. He was known to have body doubles, and he's been seen all over South America, and some people claim he did something to get to Antarctica. Who was the guy in charge of the uh, submarines? in charge of the Navy for Germany. He was actually the, the he became the, the head of Germany while Hitler was in the bunker. What was his name? Um, the Wolf Pack. Come on, someone look something up here. Uh, but it was believed that his Nazi U-boats, uh, many of them were never found, discovered, but they had made their way way south not just to Buenos Aires, Argentina, but even further south, all the way to Antarctica. And um, give me that name, Howard, when you have a chance. The Nazis get turned back at Stalingrad. They're now losing the war. And there's a little pit that starts to sink in the stomach of every German commander because they know this is a very big deal because they are not going to be able to stop this tsunami that is the Russians coming at them. And it would be three years later that the Americans then Their land on coast, which was Normandy, in D-Day, the, you know. And when did D-Day happen? It was June 6th at 6 a.m. So you've got a 666. Again, I don't know if that means much, but I do find it odd that that was the day and hour of the attack. The Germans then started, the ones that knew what was going on, they started getting out of there. And as they're losing the war... Was it Raider? No. Keep going. They're losing the war when it would be natural logic to throw everything you've got at your military defenses. What do the Germans come up with? What do the Nazis come up with? They start killing Jews. The final solution. That's what they decided to talk about at the Wolf Slayer for a whole weekend. And they had to come up with the final solution, which was obviously the extermination of the Jews. Now, the death camps had already been built, and they were being built through the 30s, I don't know if it started in the late 20s, but I think Hitler came to power in 32, 33. Uh, These camps were under construction up through the 30s. The war started September 1st with Germany's invasion of Poland. By the time that happened, I mean, we think, oh, there were three death camps. You know, there's Auschwitz and Treblinka and uh, Buchenwald. No, there were hundreds of death camps. And very much like we are doing today in the United States, we're sitting here talking about, holy cow, all these FEMA camps exist. Majority of the population is sloughing it off the same exact way the German populace did. But if you read that book in the Garden of Beasts, um, that's an insider story of the uh, buildup of that killing machine that was being put together in Nazi Germany. And if you link up the fact, our favorite family, the Bushes, it was Bush's dad who was instrumental in the financing of Nazi Germany's war machine. And not only Nazi war 
Germany and the Bush family financing it because we know money is what controls all of this stuff. You don't go from a ravaged country after World War I. You're forced to sign the Treaty of Versailles. Your economy's in shambles. There's people in lines waiting to get cheese. This is, in a matter of 10 years, they go from that to the brink of world domination. Who gave them all the loans to buy all of this stuff? This would be like saying Ethiopia in 10 years is going to take over the planet. It's unfathomable without the help of some very serious people. And this isn't widely publicized in the American media, but it was American businessmen like Henry Ford that supplied a third, hear me, a third of Nazis' transportation equipment. So our soldiers were fighting against machines that were made by an American with the money going to this American in that war. Now, something... There's something very wrong about that. Why is Mercedes-Benz still in business? I mean, they were, I mean, we put 21 guys up on trial for Nuremberg. We, we take down Arthur Anderson for helping cook the books with, uh, with Enron. Yet we allow companies like Mitsubishi, which made the, the Zero, the Japanese fighter, we allow companies like Mercedes-Benz to go on with its owners still in place, making money. Something seems wrong about that, and you link up the fact that this final solution, when <laughs> every military guy's saying, uh, we need to be fighting the Russians, not accelerating the extermination in the death camps, it was Chuck Missler who made the connection that it was most likely a demonic operation, because if Satan would have been able to wipe out all of the remnant of the Jews, which in World War I... Right, he I'm would sorry, stave off revelation. World War II, Israel had not been established yet. Right. This was a prophecy... In right. the Bible, if, one of the... If they killed all the Jews, they couldn't reestablish Israel. There would Israel. be no remnant with which right. to pull. God said in 70, 33 AD through Jesus, he said, I'm going to disperse you people. This temple's going to go down. The Romans came in in 70 AD. They tore the temple down. The Jews were dispersed. This is the second time it had happened. It also happened with the Babylonians about four or 500 years prior to that. And this time God said, I'm, I'm multiplying your punishment times seven. That came out to roughly 2,000 years. And to the day, if you do the math, do th- and I've done the math, to the day, during a four-blood moon tetrad, I might add, in 1948, as predicted, with the language being established, the currency being reestablished, and the country being established by vote in one hour, all of these predictions, it happened on the very day that God predicted it would happen, on that day. That these are not, this is impossible for it to be an accident. Obviously, the Germans did not wipe out all of the Jews. There was a remnant left, and they were brought back to their homeland, as was predicted. I'm not saying that what's going on in Israel is good. I'm not, because what is happening to the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, that's evil. Just because God predicts something is going to happen doesn't mean he's got his stamp of approval on it right. and he likes it. Uh, but for whatever reason, he did allow this to happen. And I think you, Howard, have the name of the German U-boat commander that we're talking <laughs> I about. I thought I had it before. I got Carl Donuts. Donuts. That was it. Donuts. 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 Carl Donuts. Well, it's D-O-N-I-T-Z. Now, Donuts, uh, in the O-T-O-R-O-R-O. final days of World War II, and this would have been late April, early May 1945, when Hitler was out of communication with the media of Germany at the time, uh, Dernitz assumed the uh, helm of Germany for just a few days, long enough to essentially... Surrender, right? Yes, he surrendered. That was his job. He actually wanted, job. and a lot of the German higher-ups in the military, they did not want to surrender to the Russians. They wanted to surrender. Surrender to the Americans, yeah. You guys know why? Well, I can maybe guess. What do you think the guess is? Well, because maybe they already knew that they were coming here anyway. Uh, I figured they figured they would get off easier with the Americans. They the would Russians. get off easier because the they didn't. I mean, they didn't invade America. They didn't invade the United States. It's not that they just invaded it, Russia, it, it which was, they did. It's what they, they did, did to yeah, the cities horrible. after. Yeah, they murdered the men and they raped the women and children. Yeah. I mean, this yeah, was, was brutal. Right, brutal. Th- this was Wehrmacht SS. These were the elite troops of Germany that were involved in this stuff. Yeah. Now, some of them were like, this is not honorable. But history tells the story that... Yeah, but they just didn't participate. They didn't do anything about it. The level and what does it take for evil to be successful? For good men to do, do nothing. nothing. That was in play back then. It still is today. So the Russians 
hated the German. They wanted oh, yeah. retribution. Not to say we didn't hate them too, because they killed a lot of our boys as well. Um, but yeah, it was but on a whole different level. Yeah, with you can uh, Red Army. I, I would, I would venture to guess that there was much more American hatred of the Japanese than the Germans, because the Japanese actually made that attack on Pearl Harbor. Yeah, there, was, there was one thing I wanted to bring up real quick sure. about 9-11. I don't know if we've covered it before, if anybody else realized it. I, I could just be brilliant. It's always possible. <laughs> but don't you find it odd that there was originally two towers representing two world economies, the, the, the economy of North America and the economy of Europe, and it was replaced by one? And isn't the name of it One World Trade Center? Yeah, New World Order. I, I mean, it, it dawned on me the other day. I'm, I'm sure I'm not. I'm sure I didn't just invent the wheel here, but I, I just no, it's a, I found I found that I thought that would be worth mentioning. Brilliant thought. Something I'd seen, and I'll get the image of this up. When I was first researching 9/11, before I put, you know, all I knew right now is there's some really powerful people and there's a conspiracy. That's all I really knew. I did not attach this yet to literally demonic, biblical, evil forces at work in this world. But I saw a breakdown that, in retrospect, I think it is right on point. I sloughed it off when I first saw it. And I will say this, whenever you come, now that I'm, my eyes are much more open, I won't even say fully, although I don't know how much more open they can be. I've seen enough. Uh, but when information comes across your life, your eyes, your field of vision, pay attention to it, because every time I've circled back to things that I sloughed off at one point or another, only to come back to find out, holy cow, there's a modicum of truth in here. And with the Twin Towers... Uh, there had been uh, one of the Illuminati insider defectors came out saying that, look, this whole, the Twin Towers were meant to be brought down in the beginning. And what's representative of these two Twin Towers is the seed of Satan and the seed of Mary. These two separate DNA strands. And these towers will be brought down and to symbolize the hybridization of evil forces, the return of the Nephilim. They're going to take these two buildings and they're going to make it look as if, as if you place them together, one coming from the bottom, one coming from the top. And if you look at one World Trade Center today, it's got an odd design, but it looks like two buildings that are sort of crushed together. And it was the metaphor that this guy was referring to was that this is representative of the fact that we are joining the DNA of of all humanity into one DNA strand. Now that I think is what the mark of the beast will ultimately be is something that does something to your DNA that disqualifies you permanently. There is no coming back from this one. If you accept the mark of the beast, because I think it's going to do something to alter your DNA. And we certainly are messing with DNA. Now, and I'm not talking about some experiment with um, fetal cells, all right? We're talking about we've cloned animals. And if we can clone an animal, we can clone a human. Let's just, you know, cloning well, is a hard they, thing they, to talk about. They are cloning humans. Well, if you want to get really deep into conspiracy circles, they absolutely are. There is no doubt about that. And it's not like this is like a one, oh, are the clones real or are the Nephilim real or are the Maserati giants real? They're all happening and they're they're all going to be they're all going to manifest pretty much at the exact same time so i blew that that critique into the world trade center off but now that i understand the forces that were really at work i do believe now that that is very symbolic of satan's plan to join all of our dna into something that is his creation and not god's and of course that is what is going to get god to come down here and right. when he comes it will be the last time and if you're on the side of darkness, folks, it is not too late to wake up. And remember, if you're going to play the ignorant card, oh, I didn't know I was supporting evil, that is not going to help you. It is very clearly written in this book that has predicted everything and has given us our laws. We call it the Bible. It's 66 books by 40 different guys. I'm talking to you, the people that are working inside of these secret societies that think you're doing cool work for the Central Intelligence Agency or the NSA, believe me, you're going to be ashamed one day because all of this will come to light. You've got time to get out right now. So if you're listening in and 
There's always someone at Langley listening in. Um, I'm talking to you, buddy. If you care about your family and your well-being, wake up. So to close out some of the symbols in film, there are, and I don't know where, I've got so many of these somewhere and I couldn't even find where these things are. These are different images from films, all pointing to 9-11. And if these are random, I challenge anyone to show me and um, I'll pick a generic date, let's say April, uh, April 8th. You go show me 200 movies that have some sort of symbology for April 8th. If you can do that, then I might discount what we're looking at. But the same way that we're going to be looking at some pyramids here in a minute, you're going to see how pervasive these pyramids are. And if this was random, we should be seeing other things like shamrocks or other innocuous symbols. But we don't. Um, All right. So we're still on 9-11 predictive programming. We're merging into... Do you find it odd that there is an owl on Babylonian currency, on Greek currency, and, of course, the Uh, owl is not just on historical currencies. Uh, Here, we're looking at, uh, these are Roman, uh, I'm sorry, this is Greek coin, owl. This is a decadrachum. I don't know if that's the way you pronounce it, but again, the owl is there. Follow the owl, folks. And of course, uh, embedded in our $1 bill, which is already filled with demonic images, you've got a microscopic owl in the upper right-hand corner resting uh, just above the one. So here again, that owl is still on our currency. God said there would be four demonic kingdoms. They all had owls on their currency. Now, we weren't one of the predicted demonic kingdoms. I, that is, I don't believe it was the United States because it was, uh, a, a, one way to say it is, it was the hidden Rome, the secret Rome. But if you follow the bloodlines of who the royalty is, they all link back to the popes. And the popes, of course, were really, in the beginning, nothing more than Roman Caesars going underground hiding in the papacy and as their bloodlines continued or started to disperse through Europe those became the ruling families of Europe the sirs the princes the kings and the queens they're all related to each other they all have the same demonic signs all over their jewelry all over there and what is that that yeah. that is the roman power structure hidden in the european union If you look at what the European Union is, God said there would be this beast coming out of the sea. Now, Revelation was written in code. So understand that the code is deciphered in prior books in the Bible. I think that's why the only book you get a blessing for reading in the Bible is the book of Revelation. Now, what is the sea? That is a metaphor for people. So coming out of all the people will be a beast. Well, it's not really an animal with claws. A beast in the Bible is a system. It's a political system. It's a governmental system. And when you have a beast with 10 horns, you've got a beast with 10 kings, 10 leaders. A horn is a king. A horn is someone that would be operating a beast. Now, these 10 kings are represented by the European Union. And look how many countries we've got. That is who the central bank funds, the same banking system that has demonic symbols all over currency, not just in the United States. All over the world. And in a lot of ways, they are broadcasting the fact that, hey, we are this hidden Rome power base. We were hidden. We're now coming out. In pu- We've been quiet for a thousand plus years. We're now getting public. And they're showing it to us all over certain areas of our world, from science, technology, to currency. So if you arrange a $5 bill, which is not on this image, a $10 bill, a 20 a 50 and a 100 you have a chronological story of 9-11. Uh, I'll see if I can pull up a $5 bill here in a minute. Now, they're all folded in the same way. Uh, you fold a $5 bill, you've got two standing towers with no smoke coming out of the buildings. The buildings are still pristine. $10 bill, you've got one building that's been hit. $20 bill, you've got a second building. 50 and 100, the buildings start to collapse. By the $100 bill, you've got nothing left but a plume of smoke. And, and so, the currency is in ascending order. Right, yeah. so the it's not out of order. To make it not apples to pumpkins, right? Apples to apples, you'd have to actually have magazines that are in ascending order, and it or didn't, something. It didn't skip a bill, you know? Right, exactly. Right, yeah, there would have it, ten, none twenty, of the, fifty, hundred in random. that order. You can't calculate that. In yeah. fact, you flip the bill over, folding it 
a mirror image of the original fold, and those same bills now show the Pentagon attack from a static building to a building that's been hit to a building that's full of smoke. Yeah, so now that one's more of a stretch. I'd leave that one out. Let's just stick to the one point. That's more of a stretch. Still, I mean, yeah. and it skips the 50. Uh, the end of the Depression, 1932. Do you see any demonic images on this? <laughs> I see a shamrock. Do you see a shamrock? Yeah, there's a shamrock. There is a in shamrock. The Interesting that there's a shamrock. Yeah. There's yeah. a four leaf clover. Now we've got the all seeing eye of Lucifer in the middle. Uh-huh. We've got the Star of David before, and actually, if you understand flag and what the Star of David really was, it is not, it never was that ever the Star of King David, ever. That's a, it's a misnomer. These are two pyramids inverted yeah, the same other. way the World yeah. Trade Center sure. was yep. inverted with each other. And, of course, the swastika, which goes back throughout history. And I'll, I'll show you something on the swastika in a minute. Three images in 1932 before Israel's reestablished. This is old Scottish Celtic coins showing dragons and demons. The symbology on the dollar is there's too much to show, but the same way Procter and Gamble had 13 stars, and we're going to see some other images that have 13 stars. <coughs> there's a lot more going on in the back of that dollar bill. We've got, of course, the all seeing eye of Lucifer. We're going to follow the eagle, the, the bird's wings. Uh, again, Greek, Roman coins with uh, dragon heads with owls, single eyes, uh, something that's similar to the Masonic symbol, but I'm not going to draw too much. Of course, the owl is still on our currency today. Uh, For some reason, here is another alliteration of a coin that has both a swastika and a single all-seeing eye. And Uh, and they even are called the all-seeing eye. Yeah, and it says, good luck will accompany the bearer. (laughs) Here are coins. This is a 5th century from Ionia. They've got a goat's head. Uh, now, there's a reason Jesus Christ had such a big problem with the money changers in the temple. It wasn't just because they were in the temple, but it was also because they were the money changers. And it's another reason I think that uh, it's, you know, there's a few professions you're supposed to stay away from in the Bible. Uh, being uh, a lawyer and being a banker. Because you're unwittingly, I think, you are working on their behalf. And it's funny that these demonic images follow currency going back to the first demonic kingdom of the Babylonians, yeah. and then it follows them to the Greeks, then it follows to the Romans, and now they're in the fourth demonic kingdom, which is the hidden Rome, you know, Rome II. And of course, they didn't miss Vatican City. This is a papal coin from 1592. And what is a Christian Catholic coin with you, you, uh, Gregory the Thirteenth on it, who's the Pope at the time, and he's got a... Uh, goat head demonic obvious demonic symbol on the back of the coin not only that but you will see that it's surrounded by a snake eating itself that goes back to the garden of Dude, eden that looks like a morbid angel album cover and that's yeah. a, that's a papal coin uh, here again this is from the uh, seleucid empire and you've got what looks like some type of hybrid creature with horns on money Following the the wings, doesn't this look like the same emblem that is... Here we are looking at a Nazi coin, the German Reich, 1937, before the war. We've got a bird with its wings spread over a swastika. It looks very much like the very same image we've got on the back of our dollar. And I think it's the presidential seal and a number of seals. We actually show the same type of bird holding on to some sort of an emblem, the same way it's shown here by the Nazis. Uh, This is a Roman coin. We've got, again, a pyramid-type structure. Something's in the pyramid. Maybe this one's a coincidence. Maybe not, but I don't know. I don't like coincidences anymore. Moving on. So you were talking about cartoons? Yeah, cartoons, man, are getting really dark. Here again, if there's no meaning behind this, this should be random. $1,000 $1,000 challenge. Uh, we already threw one out for the date of April, what did we say, 7th or 8th? Go find me as many shamrocks as I can find pyramids with all-seeing eyes. We're going to go through some cartoons. Some I'm familiar with, some I'm not, but obviously here's the all-seeing eye upside down in the window. In fact, the very shadow that's supposed to be cast by this, by the window behind our, our little cartoon character doesn't even mimic the actual You're right, lines, but instead does go out of its way to form an, an all-seeing eye, eye yeah. in a pyramid. Family Guy. Do you guys see anything in this that calls any attention to you? Pyramid yeah, the, with the all-seeing eye. The green book. Just 
I randomly on a book, there's an all seeing eye behind him. Maybe that's Seth MacFarlane's way of talking about who he is aligned with. Sometimes they're not so easy to spot, like on a book cover. Sometimes they're made by negative space, or in this case, they're walking through a pyramid with something that. Some kind of capstone. You guys see anything here? This is Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble. This goes back to our <laughs> oh, childhood. Oh, look at that. Yeah. They've Get been, out of here. They've been doing this for a while. Why is there an all-seeing eye pyramid in the background of that cartoon? Well, they're supposed yeah, to be. Bedrock was nowhere yeah, near Egypt. Yeah, they're supposed to be like brontosaurus burgers, man. Yeah. I believe this was from 1992. This was, uh, I want to say the cartoon was called Arthur. Again, kids show. Yeah, look at this. But here. there's all-seeing eye over the bed of our little character. Again, uh, the dollar sign in this image Coraline. is not doesn't belong right. here. These, it, this That's is Tim what Burton. I think you were discussing, no Dave, shock. soft disclosure, all-seeing eye inside of a pyramid hidden in the letter A. And look at the shadows in the background, which, you know, that's not anything friendly. This is one of those Cartoon Network shows. Do you guys see it here? They just flat out have a pyramid with a capstone. Like on the shelf. Who's the cornerstone and who's the capstone? Why are all the images of the capstone being put out there? Do you guys see it in this Yeah, there's one on the shelf there. With an eye. Oh, and that one's got an eye, too. How strange. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I don't know what to make of that one. Just, I, I included know, it for fun, but I, I do find it odd. That, I, think uh, that, I think that was American cartoonists making fun of Hitler. Now, here's Kathy cartoon. Do you see what she's yeah. reading? Of all the things she could be reading, moving on. Again, this is just a single eye, not hidden. Well, it is sort of hidden in a pyramid with rounded corners. This one could be, this one could be an accident, but do you think this one is? This is, uh, I believe, Disney. The New Age Fair. The New Age. The, New Fair. Age, the Ascended Masters. Again, wow. these are demons posing as Ascended Masters. Guys, do not believe them. They are not a, there's no benevolent. They are bad. It and no place uh, like Ohm. single home. eye wow. staring out at us. And, of course, Seth yeah. MacFarlane. Of all the books, he does yeah, show the, the, God uh, the God Delusion. I think we know who Richard Dawkins yeah, Richard works Dawkins. for. Here again... Family Guy. Yeah, how many do you see in this one? Star of David. But again, the simple one, the layup, is the pyramid with the all-seeing eye. It's the same book. Same book again, Family Guy. So it's always on that bookcase. And you guys see green. it here? Yeah, the carpet. Oh, you caught that so quickly. The carpet. That's a cartoon my son watches. I can't remember the name of it, but that, that one in the, the first all-seeing eye well, shadow thing. We're not even talking oh, about Oh, that's uh, Gravity moons. Falls. Those are Gravity Falls. Oh, thank you. But this guy's wearing a Masonic hat to boot, yeah. and he's running a uh, like a five and dime store. So why are those images in there? Remember Stan Lee cartoons? You will find this sort of thing, you know, a covert way to display a devil horn. Of course, Spider-Man has to press his web-making button that way. Just to show that there are <laughs> dark forces in cartoons. If you guys read what's on the little printout uh, of our friend, uh, <laughs> you, gotta you, guys, you guys see that? that I, I see it. Is yeah. that Caillou? No, but it looks like Caillou. Yeah, it it's, does. Because I'd feel better about Caillou. Good, if, good <laughs> God. More images, all seeing eye. Wow. It's all seeing an eye in and two uh, places. Emblem on this, this is uh, anime. Now, these were the mascots of the Olympics, and I want to say these were the 2000... I don't, I'm not sure which year, but recent... Again, yeah. one eye. Cyclops. And we're going to look at Olympics and imagery there in a second. Oh, Monster, Monster high. high. Skulls. Of course, we've got our little girlfriend here uh, doing one eye with her. And we looked at the one eyes of media and entertainment last uh, week. This is off of Nickelodeon. Oh, yeah. Do you guys see it on this? Where is it? Hidden. On the bottom of the skateboard? Do you oh, see the all is, the pyramid? It is, yeah. This was uh, Dariel used to watch that show. Um, oh wow, that's just a pharaoh. <laughs> and and, but, and he's and, holding. And, uh, and there's our spread wings again. Yeah. One all seeing eye at the, uh, and the top serpent of his staff. On his third eye. Bart Simpson. Do you see anything on here that's interesting? Yeah, on the video, on the video yep. game. The video game image in the background has got a pyramid. This is a look. Obviously, this is a Simpsons. Related to something Simpsons or the same type of anima- animation. And what kind of hats do the dolls in these boxes have? Yep. This is uh, the boss of the Simpsons, whatever his name is. I forget. Smithers or Sim- whatever. Oh, no, Smithers Burns. was it. Mr. Burns. Yeah. And you see they're uh, 
definitely an agent of evil. This is uh, Cartman. What's what was that show? South Park. South Park. Do you guys see anything in here that's interesting? Uh, Do you guys see the uh, all-seeing eye of Horus anywhere on the wall? Oh, on the on the picture on the oh, wall yeah. on the left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's actually an accurate one. Cartman and his buddies. Yeah, why is there a pyramid suspended from the ceiling with an eyeball on it? Why? Exactly. Oh, and SpongeBob, get out of here. Really? SpongeBob is tainted too. Yeah, well, come my on, friends. Of course it is. Like I said, I don't think you get successful in no this way. world without showing. Yeah, look at that. And not only that, we've got all-seeing eyes all over the place. SpongeBob here again. Of all the things, you, uh, once again, <laughs> it's what's on the shelves of these places. We've seen it in ten different cartoons. Here I mean, again. it's not just a triangular shape. It's a pyramid no. with an all-seeing eye and a and capstone. I remember this one is the that was at Secret Society. Yeah. actually. No, yeah, he actually. No, okay, so they are at a Secret. <laughs> they society. They are at it. Yeah, now, I don't know any Secret Society that actually has an eyeball on the top of their cap. No, well, but Squidward's did. Out of all of those, <laughs> out of all of the characters, I figured Squidward would be the good guy. This, oh um, yeah, this is uh, Warner Brothers again, All Seeing Eye, and this is the exact same upside down pyramid we saw in that anime. And this is uh, Warner Brothers, folks. Stan, he's one letter away yeah. from Satan. One eye again, Gravity Falls, and again he's got the uh, Masonic hat, which he always wears. Oh, there you go. There's and SpongeBob. This again. one's a double because he's making double horns, and of course he's got the one eye. SpongeBob, we loved you, pal. Do you guys uh, see it in this Homer Simpson? Yeah, in the picture on the yep. wall. Yep. Uh, do you see any others on the pictures on the wall? Uh, it's hard to see. Sun? Do you see a Freemasonic? Yep. Freemason symbol there? Yeah, the, to boot? It's yeah. not just one. The square and the compass? It's in our cartoons. It's in our, even our video games that kids play. Well, I'll just throw you through a couple of examples. And I'm not sure all the games. These are often images that are just just parts of the scenery where they'll go out of their way to stick an all-seeing eye. Here is uh, Gravity Falls again. It's like a so, map. And here again, the map has the all-seeing eye with the pyramid. The Office of Naval <laughs> Intelligence. Intelligence. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Have you guys ever seen the movie Oblivion? I don't know. Yes. Tom Cruise? Yes. What's that ship look like that is the... That's a pyramid in the sky with an all-seeing eye, the ship in Oblivion. Let's go take a look at that one. This is from Modern Warfare. Here again, the all-seeing eye is just on the logo of a random telephone booth. Why would that be there? This is from... Anyone know this game? PMC, what would that be? I don't know, but that's a compass and square. Yep. This also... This is, I think, from the... Uh, What's the series? Uh, Las Vegas. Uh, that the city you drive around and rape people and kill people all day long. Oh, that's um, yeah, Grand, Grand Theft Auto. Thank, oh, you, thank, thank you. Thank you. And you can see the uh, pyramid yeah, and the in the background. And again, the all seeing eye. Now, we talked about the Olympics. <coughs> and these guys definitely use events, uh, big ones, concerts, Olympics. In fact, we're looking at some of them now. And if you looked at the London Olympics we just had, there were nothing but pyramids with all seeing eyes surrounding the outside. This is the bird <gasps> logo. Again, this is Olympics pyramid. Where see that capstone? This you gotta invert this martini glass. And here again we've uh, got a pyramid with an all seeing eye. And fire coming out of it. <laughs> exactly. The all seeing eye, Sherlock Holmes. This was an image in the background of a movie. Again, the pyramid is in there. This is a, a rock video that shows the pyramid just on the wall. There's no reason for it to be there. I, uh, Stan Lee or Beyonce. But again, she's Miss littered Lee. with Eye of Horus. Kardashian sister, no surprise. Gaga, definitely no surprise. Single Eye. This is a Beyonce concert. You'll notice concerts of the uh, eyes in our concerts. So this is Madonna, who imitated during the Super Bowl halftime show the as is up, as is down. And she also uh, imitated the story of Mithra. Go look that one up. Eminem, do you see the pyramid in there? Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is either it's Gaga. Lady Ma- Gaga. That's Gaga. She's doing a hand signal with the eye in the background. Here's some more images of concerts. Yep. And we're going to have to uh, catch up with this again next week. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. This has been Down the Rabbit Hole. To God be the glory. Yeah, we're not giving glory to the dark side here. We want you to know who they are so you know what decision to make because the biggest decision of all our lives is coming up soon. And the enemy is at work and they're in your face. So please open your eyes. Oh.